Maybe this isn't the only butterfly effect that has happened. Someone has pre-knowledge that those two kids are going to become heroes. Hence why they were at the castle in the first place. Hmm. I, I mean, we've already ran into enough time paradoxes. I mean, why the hell are Baby Mario and Baby Luigi so important? Because someone knows how important they become. But inherently, they actually gain importance by doing that, so this is almost a self-fulfilling prophecy in a way. If you tell someone that they're important, they are actually going to, well, tell them enough when they're a kid, they're going to believe that they're important. And normally this results in someone actually becoming a brat more than anything else and spoiled and down the line in life like doing drugs and making bad life decisions, but... They do all that already! The point. They eat mushrooms! <laughs> they take drugs! They make bad decisions! What are you talking about?! I guess that's the logical conclusion of my train of thought, I guess. The babies were told they were important early on in life because some time paradox transmits some information from the future that told them they were going to save the princess, so now they believe they're important, and now because they believe they're important, they're now drug addict plumbers. <laughs> Which makes you wonder, how, what, how in the world did Mario and Luigi develop before this time paradox? Were they carpenters? I want to say they were carpenters, and they are plumbers because of time paradoxes. Because they were told they were important, and they saved... Oh, we have a tutorial to go through, I'm sorry. <laughs> when we jump now as a group, we can jump twice by first pressing the uh, baby button and then the adult button, actually, is what the point of this tutorial. But my train of thought is, inherently due to time paradoxes, we went from Mario as an animal keeper and a carpenter who was saving his girlfriend Pauline into this mystical world known as the Mushroom Kingdom, where there are plumbers who grew up believing they were important because of a time paradox. Does that make sense? Makes Sounds like too many way, shrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like too many shrooms. Well, I, I guess when you live in a land known as the Mushroom Kingdom, the, the only way you can get through it is with shrooms. But it, it's not just jumping that gets enhanced when we fight Piggy Packed. Our bro's items also become more enhanced. And the way some of these future bro items get enhanced is really funny. But for the shell, uh, one of the babies hops onto the shell, and we now have to kick it back and forth, but we can now do extra damage with the baby button. That can get interesting, because that button, if you attack with the green shell, Mario is Baby Mario, but if you do it with Luigi, it's Baby Luigi, so the button changes. It, it It's just interesting, because, you know, you have a four-button D-pad, and it's like you have to push one button for one version of the attack, but the other button for the different version of the attack. Hey, hey, yes? What? Push the button! <laughs> Too many fucking buttons! What's with all these buttons? I'm gonna- I'm not playing this! I push the wrong button all the time! It sucks! <laughs> yep. Part of the fun of this game! You know how Mario and Luigi kinda had that dyslexia between your A and button and B button and oh god what button do I have to push? Well in this game, there's four buttons. <laughs> On the bright side, yeah, when you're that. dodging it- On the bright side, when you're dodging attacks, it's almost always two buttons. Ew. I'll get more into that later as we view future enemies though, but dodging attack is pretty much the same, but for attacking, we better know our four buttons pretty well. It's in our interest to really know our buttons. Here we go! One thing I will compliment this game on, the level up screen is way faster in this game than it was in the <laughs> sequel, so I can get through these level up quicker, which is good, because we have four characters that level up. And if it wasn't this way, it's like, ugh. I should actually time the differences between the level up screen in the previous game and this game, and then add up the differences and see how much longer this game would have been if the level up section was longer. But that was Young Kamek, and no baby snatching for Young Kamek. <laughs> but here we go, off to adventure in Young Bowser's castle. So that begs the question, okay, we know Prince Bowser, he's training to become, you know, some mighty Koopa Kid, and he's well pampered, obviously, by his Koopa Kids, your carrier, by Kamek, and everything else. Is Kamek the ultimate, like, head honcho, and the one who, like, mobilizes this entire army? Because in this case, it can't be Bowser, he's a prince, unless you can think of the idea of that a prince would mobilize an army like this. But that just seems a little far-fetched to me. It seems more like Kamek is the entire reason why Bowser in the future has an army, is able to command and control an army, and everything like that. The question is, is it really Kamek? And I have no actual sustainable proof of that other than the idea of a prince doing all this is pretty far-fetched. Hmm. And I wouldn't necessarily agree that a lava-filled castle is the best place to, you know, train your, uh, <laughs> train your kid. 
assuming that Kamek has custody of Bowser and not it's actually one of Bowser's parents who we have never seen. <laughs> it's now my headcanon that Bowser's parents were like dirt poor and couldn't keep custody of their kid for whatever reason. So as a result, Bowser through some services, governmental services, ended up getting paired with Kamek. And the government didn't know what they were doing of the Mushroom Kingdom. And Kamek was actually really evil, or Kamek became evil because of something. And oh gosh, I am going way above some everyone's head right now. <laughs> I apologize. I'm going above my own head here with my own theories. Damn. This is good. I, I want more Mario backstory. Like, stop making us stupid games with the same stupid story. Give me some good Mario, like, ugh. That, that's how I feel about it. Like, I, I that's that's one of the reasons I, I, I do like this. Yes, there's paradoxes galore, but it does give you a bit of background on things, which I think is fantastic. And there's still so much more room to do stuff. Like, look what you're talking about. Like, I think they really need to do that. But they won't, because they can just make another Princess Peach got kidnapped cash grab crap thing. With, it's so annoying! <laughs> and that's my rant. Princess Peach got kidnapped again! But this time she was sent to space! <laughs> again! Again! <laughs> there you go! <laughs> See? I just space. proved my point. <laughs> this time it's not the princess that got kidnapped, it was a princess of someone else, and you can now play as Peach in the levels! <laughs> I I'm describing the plot of some Mario games in case you didn't get the joke, everyone. Anyway, it is it is in our interest to uh, battle as piggyback as often as possible, because when you battle as just one of the babies or adults by themselves, only they get the experience. Th this leads actually to an interesting fact about this game, because usually you separate the babies into an area you can't jump up to or into a small hole or something like that. It's an area where only they can access. As a result, generally speaking, at least in my experience playing this game, Baby Mario and Baby Luigi tend to get higher leveled up than Mario and Luigi, which to some people who are like super uh, OCD about making sure everyone's equal level up will drive them bonkers. It really doesn't bother me too much in this specific case though, because both Baby Mario and Baby Luigi are typically weaker than the adults. Like, you have to be really trying to make the baby stronger than the adults, actually. <laughs> so the fact that they're higher level doesn't bother me too much. Just know that we're going to be tending to battle more battles when we have a group by themselves as the babies than as the adults. And there really isn't that much balancing in this game, quote-unquote. But we need to give an explanation behind these blocks. Here we go. These blocks, what you need to do is leap into one, the little band of light goes into another block, and then it goes to another block. Or in this case, no it doesn't. Usually you have to hit four blocks. And the idea is you have to get every single one of the bros underneath each individual block. And you have to hit them in succession. If you don't hit them, ooh, pardon me, if you don't hit them in the succession, then they disappear, or they don't disappear, they start over. Hmm. Try again! <laughs> you failed, try again. But here we go, here's another set of blocks. You have to hit that one, then hit that one. And that causes something to happen. In this case, that platform goes down. Hoorah! Hooray! And another set of blocks right here. Oh, come on. Can I actually hit it for a change? That opens up the path throughout the entire rest of the dungeon, and then we're good to go. So, let me get the brothers reunited here. Oh, that's right, you have really fast speed, I completely forgot. <laughs> there we go. Running away is actually really similar to Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, except you can now cancel <laughs> with the L button, which cancels your run away when you go, oh wait, no, no, I don't want to run away. Whereas in the last game, if you hit run away, well, na now you have to run away. And you better mash that button so you don't lose too much money. <laughs> Thankfully, the monetary losses from running away really, really isn't that great. In this case, I'm mainly running away because I don't want to battle these enemies as the babies alone. The more difficult the enemy, the harder it is to run away. As evidenced by that trip that Baby Mario just made. I have to question their age because they are standing up on two. And that's typically a trait, you know, babies of at least a year, two years old start showcasing. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know... <laughs> younger biology all too well. But, in any case, why don't I comment about this enemy, because we have been seeing him a couple of but I haven't shown, told you too much about him. The Bullet Bill launching Shy Guy, showcased perfectly here. You jump on him, he loses his Bullet Bill Blaster, and then he'll try to call for one to be able to attack you again. Um, 
Elder Eyes, if he walks up to attack you, he'll either walk up, shoot a bullet bill, walk up, then try to fool you, then shoot the bullet bill. But the bullet bill comes out so slowly, actually, that it's pretty easy to uh, to dodge whether he fakes you out or not. There we go. Level 5. That was actually a really cruddy speed level up. Darn. <laughs> wow, Luigi's speed is really low. Did you <laughs> Look at that. And I still only got one. Yikes. You would think I would learn my own level up trick, but it was like, I was mashing the button, and I still got one there, so... Push my mash... the button. Do it now! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, here we go. Let's go ahead and nail this enemy as well. Here we go. So, I, I don't know about you, but having a giant cannon on your head isn't exactly the best way to defend myself that I know. It, it kind of <laughs> helps to have the cannon in your arm. <laughs> A cannon on your head, I can, I guess, conceptualize. Well, now you can imagine you're, like, shooting things at people with your eyes. Have you ever, like, pretended you had laser eyes and went pew, 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 Well, now you have a bullet bill launcher in your head that kind of does the same thing, except the bullets that come out, come out really, really slowly. <laughs> so you can just imagine, pew, 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 pew. I'm shooting you. <laughs> Alright, so we just got introduced to a new mechanic. Occasionally we'll find a room that's just completely, entirely dark, like this room. In order to light it up, we have to have a shine sprite shine the entire room. Like so. If we walk into a wrong area, well, the whole room goes dark, like this, and it's like, oh no! So the adults have to hit the lights, and then that lights up the way for the babies. Something that hasn't been shown yet, pay attention to the bottom screen. You notice that it's now an L. Hey, you have to be pay attention to the bottom screen to make sure you don't jump on it with the wrong character, or else you get punished. What's the punishment? I think the punishment is you have to start the light room all over again. Punishment is death! No more Mario and Luigi! <laughs> <laughs> you just want to see these bros just go vanish because of all this, don't you, Pop? Yes, yes I do, because I still can't get over this. I don't know why. It's bugging the crap out of me. It just is. This is... Just as an FYI, this is the whole game, then piggyback together. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> are we are we gonna start every episode welcome to the time paradox everyone no because that joke will get old eventually i'll just sit here and have to keep it to myself and stew at this and go okay well fine i'll just deal with it deal with that evil pop tart yes yes that's what i'm doing internet don't worry i will <laughs> all right that actually moves on the way here to another pipe. Oh, come on, get into the pipe, Miles Luigi. There we go. There we go. I know how to play video games. <laughs> and a save block just before a really important looking room on the map. So why don't we go ahead and save? You know, just to be on the safe side, they put the save block there for a good reason. And that brings us to this big empty room of... Well, big empty room, I guess, of, of a switch. And this takes us to a big room that somehow Toadsworth either landed here or just got here in the first place. It is filled with toys and everything else, and holy cow. And we actually found another time portal. Oh, hey, cool. We're not stuck back in the past. <laughs> Wherever that time portal goes to. <laughs> we, we should re leap into that ridiculous hole. Well, let's see here. Our choices are leap into hole, take chances, or face alien invasion. Hmm. Well, we're level 5 right now, so facing the alien invasion might not be a smart idea. <laughs> so, why don't we take our chances with the time portal? Let's go. And we're going to take the baby with us too. Oh yeah. I mean, we're not going to leave him behind for an alien invasion. I mean, we're trying to keep our own self safe, right? <laughs> So no one gets left behind for an alien invasion, but what happened to Prince Bowser? Huh. Huh. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, these two time periods are actually juxtaposed with each other right now. The 20 years in the past and the present right now. All our time portals will only go between these two time periods. So no running into Teenage Mario and dealing with Mario and Luigi partners in time, three Marios and Luigi's. <laughs> that would be amazing. Oh. <laughs> Why stop there? Why not add the elderly Mario and Luigi? Why not add 40-year-old Mario and Luigi? Why not add kid Mario and Luigi? Why don't we just have an army of like thousands of Marios and thousands of Luigis against the Shrooms? We might as well. We already have two. It can only grow exponentially at this point. 
<laughs> Why stop at two? Oh, anyway, th we have made our way back to Princess Peach's castle, and Princess Peach's castle have a ah, wow. Princess Peach's castle has a lot of goodies that we currently can't access with our current abilities. Kind of hinting towards the fact that we'll be getting more abilities. But the heart icon, I misspoke. I said it restored BP. It does not. It only restores HP. But that's still pretty cool. Full HP heal. I don't have to go to a shop, buy a bunch of mushrooms, and just heal a whole bunch. Professor Egad, maybe you can explain this time paradox better than my puny mind can. Or maybe he just looks at it and is like, well, okay. <laughs> and Egad has no problem with this. Look at this. He, he's just astounded. Yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> Has to Zingar grant you in trouble? How was it taken care of? How was it taken care of? I really do need to stress this point so that we don't overstress it in the future. How was it taken care of? Let's look back in time. <laughs> anyway, the key to getting everything figured out actually was the uh, energy source of that time machine in the first place that started this whole mess. That crystal shard. Yowzer! So that's one part of a cobalt shard, actually. Did I call it crystal star? It's a cobalt star. In any case, our adventure will be finding all the parts of that crystal... Or crystal, wow, cobalt star. So that we can use it for stuff. That stuff we're going to use it for isn't explained yet, though. <laughs> Just collect the pieces. So we have a regular everyday RPG. Collect all the pieces to be able to do things, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. There we go. We got things figured out, possibly. We, we're not even certain exactly what getting all the star shards together would do. Maybe it would let us go back and past again and never cause the Shrub invasion, like changing their mind. But then that just creates a whole new slew of time paradoxes because their invasion had to happen in the first place for us to go back in time to stop it. Which kind of, in a way, creates a figure H in the time wheel. <laughs> Instead of a butterfly, zero, it creates an eight. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Mm -hmm. All this thinking about time travel is really, really whacking up my mind. But anyway, we have a new destination to go to because a new time hole has appeared. And we're able to just go there right away if we want to, but we're going to be recommended to do some shopping first. Oh, well, first we have to be shown exactly how we look up our star stars on the paw screen. Do you screen. know how to use the start menu? Like, seriously? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, Stuffle was the one who told us, not Egad. Egad's probably wrote his PhD paper on the start button <laughs> with how often he's told us all about it. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. I want to read Egad's, like, his dissertation on the start button that got him his PhD now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we need to learn how to equip badges because we actually just got a badge. Just like in the last game, we got our clothing and our badges. So we can now equip them to each of the brothers. Um... Oh, Mario and Luigi kind of have their own independent set of clothes, and Baby Mario and Baby Luigi have their independent set of clothes. They have names. I forgot them off the top of my head, though. But, like, if you run into a baby equipment, it'll be, like, trousers or what in the world, slacks. Uh, they, they call them something, and we'll find out shortly. <laughs> but... We put on equipment to raise our defense and other statistics. Interestingly enough, in this game, badges do things in battle, but they don't explicitly by themselves affect stats. Like, for example, in that case, the salvage badge lets you get back a bro item sometimes when you finish a battle after using a bro item. So, that's pretty cool. But all, all the badges in this game kind of have something like that, where they'll, they'll do something, but usually they don't implicitly affect your stats. Usually. So we won't be getting like more badges that increase our attack power over and over and over and over <laughs> again. Here's the shop that was closed last time where we're gonna now buy some new things. And I'm gonna go ahead and get some basic gear for us to help prepare for us for the next area. Here we go, slacks and jeans. There we go. That's what I was trying to think off the top of my head. So <laughs> slacks are for men. <laughs> I don't know. I've never called anything I've worn slacks. Onesies. The baby's just going onesies. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Let, let's go ahead and buy these things because right now we're actually wearing no equipment and even though this is the really inexpensive equipment that you only wear at the beginning of the game, it's still pretty good. And let's take a look here. If we actually go under 
I tried going to... Never mind. Never mind. This shop here has items, regular items, which are pretty basic right now. One of mushrooms. Some bros items. Hey, some additional attacks here. Alongside the green shell, we have the bro flower and the cannonballer. Let's go ahead and buy a couple of these, though. The ca cannonballer is pretty expensive right now. Holy moly. As in the last game, our stash stat is actually determines how cheap things get in the game. Unlike the last Mario and Luigi game, well, in case you didn't notice from the level ups, stash stat does not implicitly go up by itself. You have to actually put points in the stash, otherwise it'll always go up by zero every level up. Hmm. So, unfortunately, we don't become more manly every time we level up. Though this interest creates an interesting idea the game presents to us. The babies have a stash stat, which really confused me at first, but I, I was told on Twitter why this is the case. The babies have a stash stat because it's a stash in their hearts. <laughs> Push it. Push it. <laughs> anyway, we're going to start our adventure and go on to the next area on the next episode of Let's Play Mario and Luigi Partners in Time. This has been Miles Luigi. Yeah, this has been the Paradox Evil Pop Tart. <laughs> and Higsby. Join us next time, where it's going to be me, my younger self, Evil Pop Tart, his younger self, and Higsby, and his younger self. And to create one big ass <laughs> time paradox that's not going to make any sense. That's right. <laughs> See you next time.